we can hear you. Thank you so much. All right. God, we thank you for this day and this time together, Jesus. We ask that you put a hedge of protection over us and everybody on this live. Um, we thank you for opening the eyes, the ears, and the hearts of so many, Jesus. And we thank you for another moment to be able to speak. Um, we praise you and we love you in your mighty name. Amen. Yes, we're all right. We are trying to find a safe spot to pull over for the night. I'm really tired tired so instead of running out of a hotel we just gonna pull over <laughs> hope there's no problems so there's that um but we're okay right now that could change it might so that's why we wanted to tell you something now so um thank you for listening all right so there was a comment um as a lot of you know the second segment to Allie All of Us is out now um, on almost every platform. It's not on Ally'sArmy.com just yet, uh, but it's out. Um, segment two is called A Mother's Relentless Love. There's two parts to it, so this is just part one that's out. If you listened to the live from yesterday, I appreciate you. Please go listen to it. Um, there was a lot of stuff in there in regards to the series so in regards to that there was a comment about the editor or excuse me it wasn't the editor it was a videographer that had I had a stress ball in my hand and what's crazy I feel like I'm yelling because this car is really loud <laughs> we're going through a really weird place so I feel like I'm yelling but I hope you can hear me <laughs> um, I had a stress ball in my hand because as you know, in segment one, a lot of you knew there was a 90 that sent us stress balls because I was pulling my hair out. <laughs> I, I'm not, I gotta do something, okay? I was pulling my hair out and wrapping it around my finger and I was using that as a fidget toy, the first segment, because I was just so nervous, I didn't know what to do with myself. So you'll see, and even in the, in the outtakes, there's these, everybody in the room is like, give me the hair <laughs> and stop pulling your hair out. Um, I didn't have anything to fidget with. I just, I get, I start having panic attacks. All of us don't do so well sometimes with cameras. There's situations with the last time that I was in a room like that um, was for porn. Uh, for, for recording in a room full of cameras and lights like that was for porn. So it was really hard um, for so many reasons. So in segment two, you'll see that I have a stress ball in my hand. It goes to a cut that I put in because I was the Can you hear me now? Yes, on Facebook you can hear me cool veins. All right, IG, can y'all hear me? Telegram, y'all clear? I better talk fast. Okay, yes. Okay, cool. So I had a stress ball in my hand. You'll hear a really weird noise at pieces in the segment when I'm in that green tank top. You'll hear really weird noises, and it's me squeezing that stress ball. I'm going to tell you right now, the, the, the set belonged to this person. This person that is speaking, who is now a 90s angel, we call him Gil. <laughs> he chose this, so don't, 
you chose this. I said, what's going to be your superhero name? And he said, Gil. And I'm like, I, I don't even think he knew what that meant. But that's what was going on. There was somebody who made the comment, like, somebody shouldn't have joked with her like that. If they know the situation, they shouldn't have been joking like that. This is why it's so important. And I wish that y'all knew everything. Because you don't. You have pieces of what's coming through this lens. And so people have this TV mentality. Let me tell you what really happened. That 90, I'm going to say producer or I'm going to say set guy because it was his set. It was a studio. It was a very, very expensive (laughs) studio. Okay. So we walked into this studio and he talked to another nineties man that called him and said, Hey, I have somebody who needs to film something. Is it okay if we come do this in your studio? Because that's the safest spot. I didn't even know where we were going. There was an angel that said, this is where we can go. This is where we can shoot it. This is what we'll do. I have the ability to do it. Pricelessly, without any money, we walked into this man's studio. We gave him a quick rundown of what we needed to film. He said, all right, I don't even know what's going on. I got a piece of it. We showed him a, a very small piece of evidence and we tried to give the man a crash course, but we didn't have that much time. So he just said, okay, let's film. He let us walk into his studio. He filmed things with numerous cameras and he handed us that footage for free all of it all of it he didn't even know what was going on he had no idea what was happening we walked into this man's studio and i don't know if y'all can hear me anymore because cut not again can you just and we just go and you know (laughs) can y'all hear me You're good on Telegram. Oh, thank you. Censorship is so frustrating. You ain't. So, you're good. Thank you. Okay. So, I don't know if you heard that part, but we walked onto this man's set. He, he, Deadpool told him what was up. He let us walk in. He turned on numerous cameras. He filmed everything. He helped with everything. He sat there and asked questions. He didn't know a damn thing about our story. He didn't know anything, nothing, not at all. He knew a very big piece, (laughs) actually. He knew a very big piece that he wasn't sure of if it was true or not. So when we walked to the door, he's like, is this true? And I'm like, here's the evidence. And he was like, oh, all right, I believe you, let's do it. He handed us the footage for free. He did everything for free. Let me tell you right now, when we walked into there, he didn't even know what we were filming. He had no idea. And by the time we started filming and by the time he made that comment, he was just finding out what was going on. So a lot of people were like, he shouldn't have said that. No, he shouldn't. But at the same time, he had no other, he had to run in there and tell me like, stop it. You're, stop it. Stop playing with yourself. Stop doing that. You're, (laughs) we can hear that. Now, a lot of people are like, he has no, that is not how you talk to a trauma survivor. That is not the situation that you make that joke. No, it's not. It's not. However, He didn't know me. He didn't know my mother. He didn't even know the story. He didn't know the situation at all. And I'm very glad that he didn't treat me like glass because some people feel like they can't joke with me. Some people feel like survivors are these very broken people. And I can't stand it when somebody tries to treat me like glass after they find out my story. It pisses me off. It absolutely pisses me off. Like I do know that people need to learn how to talk to survivors and some people really don't know how. People need to learn how to joke with the survivor. Some people really don't know how. But some people also treat me like glass or like I'm sincerely broken that you can't even talk to me when people find out. And that pisses me off. Like, I, I won't I won't do well with that. Some people feel like if we're having an adult conversation, they can't talk about sex around me. And I'm like, y'all do know that. <laughs> At the end of the day, if that's all the worst thing that happened in the day, we good. I think so. We fine. I think we're fine. But I did want to explain to you that as a father, as a man, he turned, he asked when he finally sat down and when he finally realized what was going on, he said, when is the last time that you've had a hug from a real man? And Deadpool was like, (laughs) and I can, I will post a thank you to Gil. And I will post and, and, and kind of um, blur out his face, but I will post it the moment where he found out what was going on. 
the moment where he realized what we were talking about in that moment we stopped filming for a second for him to stand up and was like can I hug you because I was shaking so bad I was like trying to get compress the story for the man to understand and at one point somebody got that on camera they got that on camera he asked me like can you give me a short story and I just started babbling <laughs> like I don't know where to start with you man but you letting us in the studio you let us film I gotta tell you something like <laughs> so I tried to babble my way into explaining it and they filmed it they I didn't even know they were filming still so you guys might see that in a minute where I'm talking to him and it looks like I'm just babbling I'm actually talking to Gil because he has no idea what's going on you'll see that very very soon i'm just babbling like and this happened and that happened and this happened and blah, 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 word vomit just everywhere and he's just like <laughs> and i couldn't see there's so many lights in my face that i could just see his shadow and i'm just talking to him and i'm kind of moving away from the camera because i'm talking to him and at him they filmed that part and he even said like that's what needs to be in your series because right now when you're nervous it's harder to catch that real shit right there when you're just trying to you know spout off things because we don't have that much time but when we had a conversation when we had a conversation can you hear me this little light of mine Telegram's still really good. Thank you so much, because I think the algorithm, I said too many no-no words on Instagram, so you know I just gotta, it's little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, Jesus, 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 <laughs> you're good now, thank you, I think I said too many no-no words on, okay, cool, so, um, real men, real men, he stood up and he gave me a hug, and he didn't want any money he didn't want anything he didn't want a damn thing for what usually people charge thousands of dollars for he didn't want nothing he let us walk in there and do what we need to do and walk out that's what humanity means anymore that's what real men mean anymore like people don't know how to do that people don't know how to just do the right thing because they're always like okay well what can i get out of it how can i can i can i do something can i get something out of it can i how can I make money? How can I make trends? How can I make... How many times have you heard me do an interview with somebody like that? How can we put you out there? How can we... This is this not... How can you help me spread the message? Is what I was, I was asking the whole time. But they were too busy asking about where can I get some type of clickbait in this? Same thing that a John does. What are you going to do for me? So while... That's the one thing that some people took from that and was like, they shouldn't have been joking. You should be paying attention to the whole thing. But if that's what you're going to take, and I would, I would explain it to you. Y'all know I, I will. That's what happened. <laughs> he wasn't trying to be malicious or vicious. He didn't know what was going on. And he was in there working the camera. So when he came running back in, he really did. It wasn't computing what we were talking about. So... A lot of people are like, well, I just, we, and we had this whole debate about putting that clip, just that clip in there. But the only reason why I did it was because that noise of the ball, I'm going to tell you right now, to me, it sounds like a sex noise, just saying. So that ball was irritating the hell out of me when I was trying to edit the series, when I was listening to it and sending it back to other editors. I'm like, can you turn this down? Like, I don't know what this sound is. It sounds really weird. Just being real. If you hear it. If you're actually listening for it, you'll hear it. And it sounds really weird. And for somebody who's been through a lot, it's triggering. <laughs> it's a really triggering because it sounds like a very disgusting noise. But it's a very squishy, stressful. So. And that's Survivor's Life. One step forward, two steps back. Like, <laughs> that's, just, that's just what a day that's holds usually. Is. And you don't, like, some people really think that, okay, respect me. Yeah, you don't got to be nasty with me because I've been nasty. I, I, I was a freak. I still can be, but we're not doing that no more. But, <laughs> but I, I can joke. Like, I still, I'm still human. Like, you don't have to... You know, I had to talk around me like, oh, she's broken. Well, let's not say anything about her. <laughs> let's not talk about anything around her. She's too broken for that. Please don't do that. That's annoying. That's, no, and, that's really annoying. It, it, you don't really have to coddle survivors that way because mm 
We could probably call you better. Right? Exactly. <laughs> we could probably hold you, <laughs> honestly. Exactly. If you if you feel it like you might disrespect us, if anything, we could probably hold you for whatever you feeling <laughs> weird about. So trust there's, there's me. intent. There's intent to be just an asshole and be crude. And there's intent of just I'm joking around and I'm not clicking. There there's difference and survivors know the difference. Somebody said people are so weird around survivors. Yeah, because you don't know how to treat them. Because nope, that's not been and taught. You see the results. You. you see why? You see why making awareness is priceless. Or or or, or raising or knowledge is priceless. Awareness is profitable. That's what I've been saying this whole time. You see how that works? People don't know how to treat survivors because where the hell is all that money going that people are doing fundraisers for? Are there classes on how to treat survivors? If there's all these organizations, foundations, and advocates that deal with children that have come out of trafficking and there's millions of them, then how do they not know and how are they not teaching other people on how to treat and talk to survivors who have MK Ultra, who have DID, who have multiple personalities, who are still coming out of Stockholm Syndrome, who are still dealing with PTSD? Those are things that you should be seeing the results for on your money. But you see how awareness is profitable. Knowledge it's priceless that's the point that's the whole point everybody in the comments is like well he clearly doesn't know what's going on no he doesn't but do you see that that's the point as a brand new person he was a brand new person on the outside looking in he was like i don't even know after he realized what the hell was going on he was like hug me i am so sorry like <laughs> you know he didn't know what to do after that with me he was just like i'm trying to be a father at the same time like i don't want to disrespect you i don't want to i don't even know what to say like <laughs> but hug me can i hug you like it was it was a lot so that's what i mean by you know people that are trying to make money off of using clips of this series i thank god that people are listening to what we're saying and trying their best at least to share it to say hey Somebody needs to do something for another child. This is still going on in our area. So somebody needs to do it. I appreciate that. What I don't appreciate and what I never will appreciate is somebody using my pain, my mother's pain, and everybody else that has been through this shit as a billboard for their gain. That is not okay. And if you realize how many people like Pelosi shit is playing with your intelligence right now and how people are using that as a way to kind of familiarize and sympathize with you to flattery is dead flattery is also bullshit and flattery is also a form of witchcraft so those that are like i sympathize with you i you know the pandering to the black people i, I sympathize just because you hold your hand like this and that's on every poster for a black person doesn't mean that you know what the hell is going on or what this stands for do you so right here doing this is pandering and flattery how many times do you see this bullshit on do you also know that this is the sign for black panthers people who are still leading your world in freemason brutality did you know that but people are i stand in solidarity no you stand in ignorance because you have no idea what's going on <laughs> you have no idea what's going on so how many? I got a question before we go. I'm going to take a poll. I just want to hear from you 90s because we love you guys so much that you will probably not understand. <laughs> um, somebody, somebody said, uh, through much flattery, many shall be deceived. That's in the book of Daniel. Amen. Here we go. See? See? Don't take my word for it. Go read Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> go check on Daniel he trying to tell everybody the same thing nobody want to hear Daniel either <laughs> go see this is what I mean by I, I may not know my Bible the way I should but it's in there thank you bro for putting that down there I appreciate you <laughs> I'm serious how many of you have been through stuff with child protective services corrupt stuff how many of you this is the interactive portion of the life. You could just put an emoji with a hand. If you could just say me, how many of you have been abused somehow by the corrupted child protective services system? I want to take a poll on my telegram, on Instagram, because I don't think people realize that the corruption runs rampant everywhere. There's patterns everywhere. If, if the people started talking, that's that whole saying of we the people. But see, nobody wants to get the people on the same page. That's what we've been trying to do this whole time. 
get the people on the same page. Nobody wants to do that. Because the second you get the people on the same page, the patterns die. Do you understand the patterns of tactics? Let's use the Pelosi situation as an example, since that's what's the distraction right now. Do you honestly think that if somebody broke into your house, you got the time in your underwear to go find a hammer and have a hammer fight with them? And then if, I am, if I'm fighting with you and I have... What is this? So make sure we're not showing anything. Okay. <laughs> if I'm fighting with you and I have this in my hand, right? And you have another one of these in your hand. Why would I come take this from you to hit you with it? Does that make sense to anybody? Okay. I called I called 911 every time. You guys see that, right? Some people really don't like that. When we get pulled over, I will call 911. Because there are, there's always someone recording something on the other end. Whether they be corrupt or not, someone's listening. And I know you're listening. And I know that's how that works. I know that's how that works because of the corrupt system that I've been put in. So let me help you. When somebody called 911 for Pelosi, the 911 call was recorded. The information that they're giving the public is not the same information that was on the 911 phone call. If you read that situation in the first few sentences, you see that is utter bullshit. Someone was having an affair. Someone has a Sancho somewhere and someone don't want no, nobody to know anything. But instead, we're going to cover that up with decades of tactics because, of course, people are just going to do what? Look over there. The patterns of tactics have been for decades with Child Protective Services. Who has been through that? Anybody? Anybody? Who has been through that? those patterns of Child Protective Services? The ones that put out fake court orders. The ones that lie to um, the parents but tell the children something else. The ones that are actually absolutely amazing parents but they have a vendetta for your kids. The ones who know that the, the, the parents that are on with the kids are drug dealers that are in the worst interest can probably kill those children and yet CPS won't answer the phone to them but they will go after the good parent how many of you have been through that situation and then when you try to fight the courts knowing that the money is what they want knowing the money is what they want the money is what keeps CPS alive do you understand that children are commodities when it comes to CPS they are walking dollar signs and the more that they are traumatized the more that they're in pain the more that the best interest for them is nothing short of close <laughs> is the more that they collect money on those children. They collect money for the parents. They know that the good parents that will never let go of their children are not going to stop fighting them. Whether that costs their home, whether that costs their lives, whether they cost, that costs uh, every piece of financial penny they have, whether they lose everything. If they love that child, they're not going to give up on them, right? So guess what? The system knows that and they will fight the good parents to the death and they will, I won't give your kids back. I don't care if you have every piece of proof under the sun. You could have an absolute video of your child being abused by somebody who you are fighting with and they still, I don't see that. I don't see that. I don't, I don't see that. But, but, right, but what do they tell you all the time? Oh, we, we want the best interest for the child, but we're going to need more money. And you're going to need another attorney. And we're going to need more money to make you go around and around in a circle. And still the children are being brutalized, traumatized, in pain. They're being moved from foster home to foster home, going through God knows what, sitting with absolute strangers. And nobody's doing a damn thing but arguing back and forth and not even close to adults. Who has been through that shit? Because I know that the corrupt CPS system runs everywhere. So it's not just us that we're talking about right so wait who's been through the police brutality who's been through the fact of uh, dealing with a, pol uh, a corrupt officer getting pulled over for something that you shouldn't have been pulled over for going to jail for something that's not even equal to what uh, what people should be in jail for dealing with the corrupt court systems because something so small and minuscule has turned into something that is demonically big who's dealt with that we want to talk about our government? Now, I know that there's a lot of people that's like, me, me, can I raise my hands and my feet? Me, right, there's a lot. So again, there is nobody bold enough 
There's no bold enough attorney to speak up because that attorney is going to get shut down by silence, hit the corrupt line, right? So no matter how many times you argue and fight with this attorney, no matter how much money you send this attorney, no matter how many times they give you an extra payment for this, I need an, I need an extra $5,000 to fight this. I need an extra $6,000 to tell them that your kid should come home. I need another, another $2,000 after you already done lost your car, your home, your family, your friends, after you done lost, damn near lost your mind, I need another $5,000 just to be able to tell the courts that what you're going through is wrong. And when you say, I can't come up with another $5,000 and oh, you just lost your kids. They shouldn't have been taken out of your home in the first place. Oops, but you just lost your kids. For those who need CPS in their life, they ain't there. For those who you see drug addicts and everything, they will fight the people that give a damn about the kids. They will they will embrace the drug addicts, the very bad, the actually bad parents. They will embrace them, right? Who is going to fight CPS? Anybody? Because the attorneys can't do it and they got the power to do it. The judges won't do it because they sit up under a thumb of somebody else. Somebody always answers to somebody higher. And at this point, there ain't even enough people in this world to pay to get to that person. You just going to lose. The system is rigged for you to lose. CPS is running through the hospitals right now. Your baby even sneezed wrong and you don't bring them to the hospital the way they wanted you to. If you say no to an extra too many shots to your child, CPS is called. They try to drag your ass back to the hospital and say, I will take your child. For what? Because they sneezed? And because I believe that I can, I, can, I can deal with this, I can fix this? Why do I need them to fix this? But do you see that the patterns, the decades, the tactics? Is there anybody that's going to be like, where the hell did y'all watch? If you watch segment two, we were only able to include a few children. Whether you give a damn about a baby or a teenager, all of the children matter. So why isn't anybody talking about that? If black lives matter, how come that black child that you've seen in segment two didn't matter? Do you see signs and murals for her or for them? Do you see their face painted everywhere? Do you see protests and people out and black lives matter? Nope. Did you see that Mexican child that was being tortured and abused in CPS? Do you see any Mexicans out throwing a freaking fit? No. You see that white child that was trafficked and in the system? And then she died and he died in the system's hands? Did it, was anybody, was anybody burning buildings down asking for reparations or making another way for this to stop happening no people are just like it's a cycle i can't fight it so i'm gonna stop everybody is why do you dare fight it's too much you're not gonna win yeah we know that because nobody has the balls enough to continue to stand to fight and there's puddles of people fighting all over the world not ocean See, if there was an ocean like there was for Black Lives Matter fighting, then we'd, we'd begin somewhere. But since there's only puddles of parents saying, like, do y'all not see this pattern? And they're everywhere and they're all over the place. Nobody really hears them. They don't matter. Their babies being tortured, abused, beaten, and murdered mysteriously in the system. That don't matter. Me being trafficked and being a victim to Child Protective Services System in Riverside County since I was three months old and even in their custody that don't matter my black life don't matter if we want to talk about minorities <laughs> knowledge is powerful and it's priceless awareness is profitable think about it and thank you for watching segment 2 Thank you for looking for the new thing coming out uh, next part to segment two. Thank you for just loving on the 90s Nation News Angels. Because every angel that has had their hand in this series is going through something right now. Whether it is mentally, PTSD from their own stuff, something resonates. You know what I mean? So there's some, there's some cameramen, there's some um, um, women that just stood there to pray. And when they, when they, something hit them and they seen something they were like why does this sound too close to home 
everybody is going through a war that nobody knows about but nobody is willing to fight it because everybody is just like I just want one way to fight this it's too tedious it's too much work to fight it the real way if there was just someone in the opposite like my mom tells me all the time if there was somebody in the opposite uniform and we were just instructed to it's war get them that'd be easy it's not always a gunfight is it it'd be super easy if we could just be like that's the one <laughs> aim fire <laughs> that'd be easy that's not like it's not that's not reality and it's not reality because humans won't stand up to this problem that's why we keep getting on here and no matter what the hell we're going through even though there's some days that sincerely the other day i was rocking in a corner i ain't even gonna lie about that shit i'm not i i'm not in denial i was rocking in a corner okay and i i was just like look what is the point <laughs> like we just made this series for what <laughs> like what's the point of getting pulled over again because I said a name that they didn't want me to say. I'm not being submissive because that's what you built in us as altars. You don't get to build this bitch anymore. Do you understand that? <laughs> I was participating in that build a slave company for a very long time. You are done with this building bitch. Like you are done. You and Bob the Builder and everybody else and Micro the Builder, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Like I don't... I, I don't know what to tell you anymore. There's a lot of people that are just so upset with me. Like, you're not submitting and, and you're lashing now. I'm angry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm angry. And I'm laughing right now because I'm a hint away from stepping. So, <laughs> I'm fucking angry. And there is not a damn thing that I can do about that because it's out of our control. So the only thing that we can do is put our damn seatbelts on and say, here we go. <laughs> and try not to die. That's it, that's all we got. And I ain't going back in nobody's chains, no. And you you might look at me right now like I don't even know this chick and I don't know why she's laughing about something so serious. My humor is so dark. I don't think you'd be able to sit with me. <laughs> Some people are like, you seem like you're a cool person to hang out with. Nah. <laughs> we'll laugh, but you're gonna be you're gonna be pretty pretty interested in why you're laughing. So Well, <laughs> well <laughs> sweating my scarf is coming off I'm sweating so bad it's expanding you got anything to say <laughs> there's a female cop that helped program um, some of the altars um, with Zach and Aaliyah oh, Stacy hey, is her name Stacy? We, I didn't want you to think we forgot about you thank no. you for the gifts that you sent we had a wonderful time today let me tell you about Stacy. I'll tell you about Stacy. Some people want to know about Stacy. And the thing is, is with Stacy, let me help you out if you're listening to this. Again, excuse me, 90. Excuse me. Excuse me. But just listen. You in this conversation, but just excuse me. So with Stacy, <laughs> I still have your text messages. <laughs> Do you want to see them? Because they're linked to your phone number. You see how that works? You remember when you were telling me and you were you were trying to come at my mom when I barely turned 18 and you were like she's 18 she could do whatever she want and it was because we were on our way to a sex festival do you remember that Stacy? I remember it do you remember let me help you out there was also <laughs> she also came to this party that everybody was mr. misunderstood yeah he was calling my adoption party but it was also my engagement party and they dedicated us us in a gazebo in the and, and around in their yard I was about to give the street I won't do that <laughs> <laughs> I, won't do, I won't do that no violence I just, <laughs> if it slips it slips it's not my fault but that street in Eastvale there was a gazebo there that they dedicated me back to Satan to as their daughter but as their daughter-in-law and also as their wife so everybody watched Zach and Aaliyah have sex with a minor in front of everyone. 
Stacy was at that party. And she also Stacey ordered... the police officer yeah, was Stacey, at that party. Go yeah, figure. She, and she also ordered, because she's married, to a female who is also a cop, but is also a desk cop. You recall this, Stacy? Do you want me to say your wife's name? Because I don't think she had anything to do with this, but we can bring her in this. I mean, <laughs> I know she has a few things to do with it. Like, <laughs> a few things. I know she knows. She told me how much she enjoyed it. Sick bitch. But, not my problem. My issue now is there's so many things going on between Micro Mike and Stacy. <sighs> They really think they're doing something with this uh, crooked blue, li blue line. <laughs> so, uh... Ashley, Stacy, I think you, maybe Ashley, you might want to talk to your wife. <laughs> get your girl. <laughs> you might want to get your <laughs> wife. Because the deal with that is I can I can post everything I really can I'm not I'm really not trying to be funny I just sometimes I make myself laugh because I know for a fact <laughs> that I'm not gonna be laughing soon so I'm just gonna <laughs> laugh now if we're gonna get hell for this I might find some enjoyment somewhere right remember how I used to say that all the time like if you are going to hit me just go ahead and hit me till you come so we can get this over with I might smile at you sarcastically so you might want to hit me again just so you can come and get this over with you remember that Stacy so <laughs> Mike remembers that too um, and so many of his friends PD anyway the point is <sighs> how many times are we playing this game do y'all realize that do you understand that my hands and my mother's hands are tied so much that we come on here and we say shit just so we can show you so when they on this window again and you see another one <laughs> you'll understand what these last two videos meant when I keep saying excuse me I'm not talking to you because in a minute when they get beside themselves and they can't control their anger like they did before and they have to serve and protect their brothers and sisters they gonna knock on this window again probably for a mile over the speed limit probably for a speed cushion like last time in Nebraska Probably for the fact that somebody was trespassing on property and they wanted us to know that it's okay and we don't have to press charges. Probably for um, going, someone being behind us and going way faster than us in the front and usually they should have been in our backseat if that was the case and logic was kicking in. I don't know what reason we're going again for, but you have to see somebody said, let's scooch over. I think you should scooch <laughs> over. And so you can, you can see and you can follow along. That I'm sometimes I'm not talking to you because you get to meet who we talking to in how many states? How many times? If, for those who have been here for been watching this 90s that have been here for a minute, please speak up. How many times have you seen one of our pimps pop up and be vulgar? How many times have you seen us be attacked and then people get caught in their own snares? How many times have you seen witches and pedophiles and all kind of things come forward because we say a little bit too much and then they just can't control themselves? They had to act crazy. How many times have you seen that? So when I asked y'all to scooch over, that's why. People said too many. <laughs> many. A disturbing amount. That's, yep. Too many to count. Yep. One too many times. Thank you. Too many. Yep. It just keeps going. Too many times to count. Yep. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Now, I want you to think. Other survivors go through this alone. And when I was a child, I went through this alone. There's another child right now that's going through this alone. And, and they're getting a little bit pissy because somebody doesn't submit over a live. So what are they doing behind closed doors? And you probably their next door neighbor probably passed that cop car tonight I pray y'all all get trapped in your own snare if anything comes of anything if y'all forget us after all this time if you have paid attention to all of this I don't know how else to show you reality I don't we don't know how else to 
<laughs> I'm visiting, really mad at you. <laughs> really upset at you. Yeah. My mother keeps causing this malfunction. No, she's not. It's me. It's, not, it's all me. Again, I'm the problem. I'm the one malfunctioning, remember? Don't blame that on her. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually your fault because whatever programming you put in is the one that broke. So why aren't you blaming yourself? <laughs> you guys didn't do a very good job. We still don't take responsibility for anything, do we? <laughs> it's like children. <laughs> it's their fault. I built it, but it broke. No, it's everybody else's fault. All right, we're seriously going to go. We love you guys so much. <laughs> um, we thank you for everything, and thank you for praying for us. Mama, you want to pray out? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you do. We ask um, that you continue to allow us to, to fight, Father God, and to speak the truth, Father God. Um, let your truth and your love and your kindness resonate in people's hearts. Um, let them know who you are and how much you love them, Father God. I ask that you give everybody a good night tonight. Let everybody get good rest. Um, and we just give you the praise and the thanks in your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for praying for us. We will talk to you all sooner than later. And thanks for watching segment two. Um, it should be on AllysArmy.com very soon. But thanks for trying to watch it everywhere else. Love you guys. Bye.